A burglary suspect is dead after Frisco police say he got into a shootout with officers. Good evening, I'm Blake Hansen. It happened yesterday afternoon, but it wasn't until tonight that investigators revealed officers had shot someone and that person had died. It all happened as officers responded to a burglary at a Frisco apartment. Fox News Amelia Jones spoke with the burglary victims who encountered the suspect shortly before the shooting. Amelia. Blake, police haven't yet identified the man who got in a shootout with officers. The couple told me they made sure to lock up their apartment and close the garage before they left. They were shocked to find someone was able to break in. I thought it was nice. It seemed like a really nice area. Kylie Lawley and AJ Steele got the keys to their new apartment at Legends at Legacy in Frisco on Friday. After unpacking Saturday morning, the couple left around noon to get a U-Haul truck and pick up a couch. When they got back a few hours later, the garage door wouldn't open and maintenance had to open it manually. That's when we just saw the car. A car that didn't belong to them and an unknown man in the driver's seat. So I immediately walk up to the car window and I'm knocking on the window. Hey, what are you doing in my garage? What are you doing in my garage? And he just started, he rolled down his window and he started freaking out, couldn't really get a word out. Steele noticed the door to the apartment was pried open. And when he tried to open it, the man yelled that someone was in there. Steele walked out of the garage and that's when he says the man darted into the apartment. The couple called police and 10 minutes later they said officers were blocking the entrance and exit to the apartment. Well they originally thought he like came in here and like was going to barricade himself or something. Frisco police didn't share details about what happened when officers got there but they did say officers found the armed suspect in the neighborhood across the street. According to police the man opened fire on the officers. The officers fired back hitting and killing him. No officers were hurt. We were surprised, honestly surprised that he was even nearby in the area. We are super thankful that he was able to be caught nevertheless and, you know, more thankful that, you know, me and her are both safe and sound. The couple says the suspect packed the trunk of his car with their belongings, including their electronics, college diploma, and clothes. Broken hangers were scattered on the floor of the apartment and garage. The only clothes we have now is the ones on our back that they took every single other piece of clothing. The couple is staying with family and working with the leasing office to figure out next steps. We definitely don't feel safe in this unit. That is for sure. Hopefully we can sort something out with them. The two grateful they weren't hurt. It's definitely a traumatic experience to say the least. Very shocking to happen. The couple told me the suspect's car was towed to the police station with their belongings still in the trunk. It could be a few days before they get their things back. The Texas Rangers are leading the investigation and the suspect's identity is expected to be released by the Tarrant County Medical Examiner's Office. Blake, back to you. All right, Amelia, thanks. Dallas police released surveillance and body camera video of a shooting that wounded an officer working undercover surveillance. Hello, I'm Steve Eager. And I'm Heather Hayes. Police also say the shooting suspect, who is 17 years old, is linked to other violent crimes. Fox 4's Alex Boyer has the latest from Dallas police. Alex. Hey guys, you know, and police tell us that the officer who is a four year veteran of the department was working overtime in an undercover capacity when he was shot. Thankfully, he continues to recover at the hospital. Meanwhile, we are learning that the 17 year old suspect police say is a documented gang member with a lengthy criminal history. March 14th, shortly before 1 a.m., home surveillance video captured the moment the driver of this stolen blue Chevy Camaro made a U-turn on the 3200 block of Esther Avenue in Dallas and fired at a Dallas police officer who was following him undercover. Driver of the blue Camaro fired five rounds at the officer's car, hitting it twice. One of the rounds went in the driver's door and hit the officer in his hip. The officer, Tyler Morris, later posted pictures of his recovery at the hospital. At Monday's news conference, Chief Eddie Garcia said the shooting suspect, identified as 17-year-old Jahart Nickelberry, had been driving erratically, and that's why Officer Morris followed him. Driving recklessly, doing donuts, and nearly hitting an unmarked police vehicle. After the officer was shot, he radioed for help as the Camaro took off. Camaro's exiting at Wheeland at 35. Officers located the car on East Keys Boulevard and attempted to stop it, but the driver sped off. Nickelberry eventually ditched the car in the parking lot of an apartment complex off Chesterfield. 
A freeze frame of police dash camera video shows what Chief Garcia says is a gun in Nickelberry's hand. He and two others ran from the Camaro. Three others stayed in the car. With the help of Air One, officers were able to locate Nickelberry and take him into custody. Get on the a second passenger, a 15-year-old female, was caught after a short foot chase. Garcia says investigators later learned the stolen Camaro was involved in an aggravated robbery earlier that night and believed Nickelberry was also responsible. Garcia says property belonging to the robbery victim was found in the Camaro. Detectives also found several weapons, including a gun that had been reported stolen out of Louisiana. Garcia says Nickelberry is also believed to have been involved in a home invasion in Ellis County that ended with Glenn Heights police shooting and killing one suspect. I know for a fact that my officers prevented further violent crimes to have been committed that night and future crimes. And we're lucky that we did not lose an officer in the process. And Nickelberry faces several felony charges. Police are also still looking for a second male suspect who ran from the scene. Uh, that person has yet to be identified. Meanwhile, I can tell you, according to the officer's uh, social media post, he has undergone two surgeries on his hip. He says that doctors have been able to successfully remove the bullet from his hip. He is optimistic, as well as doctors, that he will make a full recovery. Irving police are looking for a predator who attacked a woman while she was out for a run in her neighborhood. She says he tried to sexually assault her, but she fought him off. Fox 4's Amelia Jones talked with that victim this evening. Amelia. Steve, she's sharing her story with us tonight to make sure people are on the lookout for the man who attacked her. She says while she was able to fight him off, someone else might not be so lucky. The sidewalks along Cowboys Parkway in Irving are full of people enjoying the spring weather, and they seem to have a sense of safety. It was the same feeling Nicole Fugate had when she started her run through the neighborhood Monday, March 11th, around 3 p.m. I was walking on, on this sidewalk here along the wall. Um, the, the suspect pulled up and parked his car on the corner. Fugate says she never saw the man coming until he grabbed her from behind. And he used one arm to feel around and make sure I didn't have a weapon on me. Then the man threw her on the ground. Halfway through, I had a moment of like, Nicole, you, you have to fight. You're like, this man is about to do something terrible to you. Like, if you don't, if you don't fight, this is about to happen to you. Fugate found the strength to fight back. I scratched him and I punched him and everything I could to get him off of me. She says the attacker never said anything to her. And after a short tussle, he ran back to the car parked on the corner of Touchdown Drive in Cowboys Parkway and took off. Fugate gave police a description of the perpetrator when she filed a report. Irving police say the suspect is a black male around 5'5", 140 to 150 pounds, between 25 and 30 years old. He had a short, buzzed-cut hairstyle and was wearing a dark-colored T-shirt. Police also say the car he was driving is a silver PT Cruiser. It just... It irritates me that, you know, that I have to feel like this, um, that, you know... As women, like, we can't just walk around the streets and be safe. As an avid runner, Fugate takes precautions to stay safe, but that didn't stop someone from trying to hurt her. Going through such a traumatic situation and then also not being able to have my outlet has been very, very hard just because I don't feel safe on the trail or or a sidewalk right now. Irving police searched the neighborhood after it happened, but didn't find the attacker. Fugate is asking people who live in the area to check their security cameras. That's my hope is that somebody got him on camera. So he can be caught and a sense of safety can be restored. Just because I got away doesn't mean the next person will. I don't want any woman to have to go through the emotional experience that I've had to go through. If you live in the neighborhood and you have security camera footage from March 11 around 3.15 p.m. that shows the suspect or the car he was driving, police would like to hear from you. And if you've seen someone that matches the suspect description or a silver PT Cruiser in the area, you're asked to call Irving Police immediately. An Arlington firefighter is recovering after being shot at an Arlington apartment complex overnight. Brady Weaver and other Arlington first responders were making welfare check just after midnight last night. Not long after knocking on the door, a shot was fired from inside the apartment. Fox 4's Dion Anglin joins us with more on exactly what investigators say happened. Dion. 
Hi there, Steve. Well, the latest update, the injured firefighter is stable. His condition is said to be improving. And during a news conference this afternoon, police and fire officials shared details of what happened. Six-year department veteran, Arlington firefighter Brady Weaver, was struck once in the chest by a single gunshot. A bullet fired from inside an apartment through the front door. He appears to be in good spirits and is alert. Weaver was in front of a group of first responders at that door for a 911 welfare check involving small children inside the unit crying for their mother. Crying for an extended period of time and calling for their mother to wake up and open the door. When first responders arrived at that door, police say the crying children continued. The officers continued to knock at the door and ring the doorbell for approximately five more minutes. They announced themselves as police 17 times, trying to communicate that they were there to try to make sure everyone was okay. Concerned that there was someone inside who was injured, unresponsive, or in need of medical attention. A pivotal decision followed. First responders made the decision to force entry into the apartment. Arlington fire personnel are equipped with tools that can be used to breach doors, so they began to work on the door to get inside the apartment. While they were doing that, officers continued to announce themselves. Police say during that process of trying to breach the door, the shot was fired. But just to add clarity, as the door was being breached by the firefighter with the breaching tool, the person fired the weapon bullet goes through the door, strikes the firefighter. After retreating and giving commands, investigators say 27-year-old Demetric Brooks, his girlfriend, and two small children walked out. Brooks is charged with aggravated assault and other outstanding charges, while the district attorney reviews the case. Facts that our investigators know at this particular time, that the subject was asleep inside the residence with his girlfriend, and they woke up hearing first responders trying to breach the door. Thinking that someone was trying to break in, he fired a shot and had his girlfriend call 911. We have confirmed that the girlfriend did call 911. The fire chief says firefighters in certain volatile situations are required to wear protective vests. He adds for firefighter Weaver, this was not deemed one of those times. Like Chief McGuire said, you know, they didn't feel like they were in any danger. Now, both departments are asking for continued prayers for firefighter Weaver. And again, the district attorney will likely determine the next move in this case in what the assistant police chief acknowledges is a very difficult investigation. A 24-year-old woman is behind bars charged with causing a crash that ended with the death of a 33-year-old man. Details about what led up to the crash are limited, but police believe the suspect was under the influence. Fox 4's Amelia Jones spoke to a woman who witnessed the aftermath of that crash, and Amelia is live at the Grand Prairie Police Department. Amelia. Heather, when I spoke to that woman, she told me that the horrific scene, well, she says that it took her breath away. Yeah, my initial reaction was, wow, what's, what is this? What's going on? I was shocked. On Sunday morning, Sophie Austin was headed home from the gym when she passed a crash on South Beltline Road in Grand Prairie. As soon as I was able to see, I saw the, the SUV that was flipped upside down, and I was like, oh my goodness. Cell phone video sent to Fox 4 shows the scene. Grand Prairie police say around 7.30 that morning, a pickup truck traveling southbound on Beltline Road crossed over into the northbound lanes, hitting a Jeep SUV near Lakeview Drive. The driver of the SUV, identified as 33-year-old Carlos Alberto Ariavera, died instantly. Police say a passenger in the Jeep was taken to the hospital. The driver of the pickup truck that caused the crash, 24-year-old Klesis Leva, was charged with intoxication manslaughter and aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. It's just sad that it happened because it definitely could have been something that was avoided. 
Austin didn't hear or see the crash, but when she passed it, emergency crews weren't at the scene yet, and people who stopped to help were waving traffic around the crash. She believes if she didn't stop to get gas on her way home, she could have been there when it happened. I think the little 10 minutes that I took to get gas could have been like the 10 minutes that that could have barely just happened. So it was uh, it was very surreal to me to, to be there at that time. Grand Prairie police haven't released further details about what led up to the crash. Maybe this was just something, one bad choice, but it, it unfortunately took that one time, you know, to cause such chaos. And we're working to learn more about the 33-year-old man who died in the crash. Police confirm that Leva is still here in custody at the Grand Prairie Jail. Her bond is set at $125,000.